What is this new grow light? The Spider Farmer G3000? Yes it is! Let's get it out of the box and take a look! Welcome to the Hippie Geeks! Let's dig into this grow light unboxing and par level test! I needed a new light for our upcoming grow in the Spider Farmer 28 inch by 28 inch grow tent, and they were kind enough to send over the G3000 for us to use in the grow. Their lights are always very well packaged, and this one was no exception as it survived all the damage that UPS did to the box before it got to us. If you watched our earlier unboxing of the SE7000 that is going into the 4 foot by 4 foot tent, this light is going to look pretty familiar. It is a similar bar style grow light, just much smaller and at a more affordable price point. Putting the light together was really simple, and you may have noticed that I rearranged my space between the last unboxing and this one. The light bars clip into the crossbars just like they did on the SE7000, and it takes up considerably less space as the light is only 24 inches by 24 inches. Once all four bars were clicked into place, I just needed to flip it over and connect the power wires from the crossbar to the light bars. After that, I attached the four feet to the driver with the provided thumb screws, though I am not sure yet if I'm going to run this driver on the light or remotely on top of the tent. This is a lot of light for a 2x2 tent, and I think that I am probably going to end up running it remotely, but we will see. Now that it is all assembled, it is time to check out the par levels inside of the Spider Farmer 28 inch by 28 inch tent, with measurements taken every 7 inches. This is just about the largest light you can fit into a tent this size, which should give me really great light coverage. The driver does have plenty of length on its cables so that I can mount it outside of the tent, and the amount of heat that is inside the tent is going to determine if I want to run it in there or outside the tent as I have before. At a 12 inch height, the PAR reading in the center is 1099, falling off to between 870 and 930 PAR at the far corners. I do the best I can to hang the light level in the tent, but sometimes it is a little off kilter and I don't really notice until I have pulled all of the PAR level readings. This light will draw 300 watts from the wall at full power and it goes down from there as you dim the dial. At 80 it pulled 281 watts from the wall, at 60 it was pulling 161 watts, at 40 it went down to 101 watts, at 20 it was pulling 51 watts, and finally at minimum it pulled 21 watts from the wall. Moving up to an 18 inch height, the center reading is now at 967 par, and the incredible thing to look at with this light is how even the light levels are in the center and how much more spread out the light is over the space. We also took par readings with the light dimmed down and averaged what the results were, which gives you the par x readings on the left. All of the readings shown on the screen are at full power, and to get the light levels at different dim settings, just multiply the shown par value by that number. For an example, the center reading at 18 inches is 967, but if we have the light set to 60, we would multiply it by 0.55 and get a result of 532 par, which will get you pretty close with all of the values shown. At a 24 inch height, the center level is down to 865 par, again with an amazing spread from there out. We are still using the Apogee SQ420 Smart Quantum Sensor to take all of these measurements, and it has been working really great for the last several years. It is just the sensor itself and plugs into a PC to get the readings, so it is a bit more affordable than their standalone units. Their standalone units are quite a bit more expensive, but they do not need to be plugged into a computer to get a reading. We will leave an Amazon Affiliates link to it down below if that is something you are interested in checking out for yourself. Moving up to 30 inches and the center reading is now at 775 par, and you may be wondering why we did not have 12 or 18 inch measurements for the SE7000 unboxing, but we do with this one. The main reason is that the SE7000 is so bright, even at 24 inches, that it isn't worth it, for me at least, to risk having the light that close with the amount of heat that it can put off. With a smaller light like this, you are much more likely to have it closer to the canopy so we included them here. If you watched the SE7000 unboxing and were really hoping for par readings at those lower hanging heights, let me know in the comments and we will do an updated review in the future with those added in as well. Getting up to 36 inches, the center level is down to 679 par, again with an amazing spread from there out. 
I love using the largest light inside of a tent that we can, just so that I know I have as much light across the canopy as possible, no matter where we have it hung in relation to the plants. I also prefer to keep the lights turned down a bit as well, as running any electronics at their maximum levels all the time will lead to more wear on the circuits than if you have it turned down a little bit. This also helps to control the heat inside of the tent, as the light will run cooler at a lower power setting, while still being able to give you a ton of light when you need it. Finally, I hung the light at 48 inches, and the center reading is at 516 par, which is still fantastic. Removable remote drivers are one of my favorite things about these bar style grow lights, and they give you a lot of flexibility with setting up the tent. The ability to place the driver outside of the tent when you need less heat in there is going to be amazing with this light for keeping the temps inside of the tent down to a manageable level, but it is also nice to have the choice to mount it inside of the tent like we are here initially, as I may need the extra heat to keep the plants happy since I am sprouting them in the winter. This is the first 300 watt light that we have ever checked out, and it will be the largest light that we have ever tried growing with inside of a smaller grow tent, so I am really excited to see how the plants do in here over the course of the grow. This light would also work out really well inside of a 3 foot by 3 foot tent, and in the future we will be measuring its light levels inside of a tent that size as well. For now though, we will just have to see how it works in here, and check back in tomorrow to see how we are going to set up the tent for the next grow using this light. A big thank you to Spider Farmer for sending this light over for us to take a look at. If you would like to try this light out for yourself, I will leave a link to it on their website in the description down below. Make sure to use code GEEKS at checkout to get an 8% discount on your order. Another big shout out goes to our channel members here on YouTube and patrons over on Patreon that have pledged at the trimmer level. While all of our members and patrons help keep the channel going, you folks have gone above and beyond, and we really appreciate it.